ಓಂ ಶುಕ್ಲಾಂಬರಧರಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಶಶಿವರ್ಣಂ ಚತುರ್ಭುಜ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನವದನ ಧ್ಯಾತ್ ಸರ್ವಘ್ನೋಪಶಾಂತ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯ ವರಧೆ ಕಾಮಿಣಿ ವಿಂಧ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿರ್ಭವತು ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಯೇನಾಕ್ಷರಸ ಮಾಂ ಅಧಿಗಮ್ಯ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರಾತ್ ಕೃತ್ಸ್ನ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಪಾಣಿನೇ ನಮಃ ವಾಕ್ಯಕಾರಂಬರುಚಿ ಭಾಷ್ಯಕಾರಂಬತಂಜಲಿ ಪಾನಿ ಸೂತ್ರಕಾರ ಪ್ರಣತೂಸ್ಮಿ ಮುನಿತ್ರಯ ವಾಗರ್ಥಾವಿವ ಸಂಪೃಕ್ತ ವಾಗರ್ಥ ಪ್ರತಿಪತ್ತ ಜಗತ ಪಿತರೋ ವಂದೇ ಪಾರ್ವತೀ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತೆ ಶಾಂತೆ ಶಾಂತಿ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ So today we're going to be talking about Kridanta. Before we get started, we'll look at a, just a, a quick overview like what we saw last time. So even if we look at the index of the book, so, so far we've talked about Vritti, right? This whole book is Pancha Vritti, five different Vrittis, five type of derived words. And we have talked a little bit about Vigrahas, the sentences which explain the derived words. right how they become or why they what they mean right so what they mean is described in the vigraha there's these five types of vrittis five types of new words that can be derived or made only one makes a datu these four make up pratipadika right there's datus and pratipatikas just like well how we were saying there's only two types of words there's subantam and tinkantam there's datus and pratipatika so we're in the level we're in um yeah where we're doing we're at the micro level yeah <laughs> we're looking at before we were looking at sentences now we're looking at individual words within those we're making datus and pratipatika so sanadyanta datu vrittihi that makes a new datu from a datu or a subanta okay so we're making a new datu krit vritti is a new pratipadika right these four new pratipadika but krit vritti is a new pratipadika made from a datu so it gives that action sense taddita vritti is a new pratipadika made from another pratipadika for samasavritti is a new pratipadika made by adding made by compounding different nouns together ekasheshavritti is a new pratipadika by keeping one out of the many okay So we saw those briefly and then we looked a little bit more deeply into sanadyanta sanadyanta ha these derived roots we saw nijanta and sananta nijanta gives the meaning to cause to do right so if i at nich the word is nich right that the suffix is nich rather it gives an e at the end of the datu so if i have gum plus nich it becomes gummy right and that means to make to go right i'm making someone go then we saw sananta sananta gives the meaning to desire to desire to do something 
And it involves this process called dvitvam, which is duplication. Duplication, it doubles. So like um, muksh, muksh, right? Uh, it's actually much, much is to be free. It becomes mumuch, and then it becomes mumuksh. So we become mumukshu, the one who desires to be free, or mumuksha, the desire itself to be free. So, but the the root itself is mumuksh, right? And then we can add a a um, another suffix at the end to make it a noun. Okay, but here we're just making roots. So those are the two types of roots or two types of sanadhi pratyas we've seen. Now we started to look at kridanta. Kridanta, right, are, what are we making? We're making a pratipadika. Making a pratipadika from a datu, right? So we're adding suffixes to a root to make a new nominal base, right? So what's the equation? The equation is datu plus krit pratyaya equals nu pratipadi. Okay, so we're starting with the datu and we're making a new pratipadika by adding this krit pratya. The the it's it's called a kridanta, right? The word at the end when we get this new pratipadika, it's called a kridanta. Also, the, the noun, the subanta we make out of the pratipadika is also called a kridanta. Okay, so we can call the, it's technically the pratipadika, but we also call the subanta made out of that, also we call that a kridanta. When we're talking about krit pratya, we need to see two levels. One is that each of these has a basic sense to it. They have a basic sense to them. The basic sense of a krit pratya is usually, well, not usually, it always is, Let me show you. It's usually a karaka. Right? So we know these six karakas. So this, this word usually gives denotes one of these six. So that's one of the basic meanings that a krit, this krit pratya gives to the datu. It tells us, is it, is it the karta of this datu? Is it a karma of this datu, of this action? Is it the karna, sampradhanam, etc. of the action denoted by the datu? That's the basic sense is one of these six karakas. We also have this idea called bhava or bhave. Bhave means it's just the meaning of the datu itself. So the basic sense is that it can denote any of these six or bhave, just the meaning of the datu itself. Uh, we'll see examples as we go along. Then there's what we call an additional sense, an additional sense of kritpratya, meaning that there's a second layer to the kritpratya. It gives another meaning to, it gives another meaning, yeah, right? It gives a second layer. The second layer of meaning, um, there, there's quite a few, so we'll see that list additional sense here. So for example, on top of the basic sense, some kritpratyas can indicate time of the action. So it can give a tense. 
it can give the tell you the necessity of the action and so on. So this is called the additional sense. So an example of what we're talking about is okay, let's look at this one. Gum pastavia. Gum is a dato, right? Because here we're starting, we're talking about kredanta. We're starting with dato. A, a way to remember that is you see the word kredanta. Kr means to do, right? It's an it's a it's a dato itself. So that's the way you can remember that this has to do with some sort of action, <laughs> right? And you're gonna start with the dato. This is an easy way to remember that. So here we've gum to reach. I'm adding a krutpatya called tavya. We'll see this. We're going to see this more in detail later. I'm just giving the basic idea. Now, this tavya gives a basic sense and an additional sense. Right? The basic sense is one of the karakas. Here, karma karaka, right? It's the object of the action to reach. So this word is going to mean something ed. So that which is reached, that which is reached, right? It, the destination. The karma of reaching is told by this tavya. That's the basic sense. But it also gives an additional sense of necessity. It's necessary to go, right? So gandavya together means that which should be reached, right? It should be reached. It's necessary to be reached. So do we get that idea of basic sense and additional sense? Basic sense object or agent, for example, and then these additional sense, it can give you a, a time or a necessity. Okay. Now, in this class, we're going to be talking about one type, one subcategory of Kritpatya called kritya. We started this in our last class. We're going to continue it. So you can repeat after me. Kritya. Kritya. So kritya. Or for short, we can say kritya. A subcategory, a subsection of kritpratyas. The basic meaning, right? That foundational meaning is it tells you the karma, the object, right? Or it can be bhava, the meaning of the datu itself. Okay. It can, so it's karmani in the sense of karma or bhave in the sense of bhava. It can be either or, one of those two, but it's one of those two. An additional meaning, I've crossed this out because it doesn't happen as much, but additional meanings are the fitness, necessity, capacity. So for example, it is the object, right? It's the object, karma, which should be done. Object, which is fitness, object, which is fit to be done object which is necessarily to be done or capacity object which is possible to be done okay so it's going to be the object if we're taking bhava it's the action itself not the karma but the action itself which should be done which is fit to be done which is necessary to be done which is possible to be done okay When we remove the it letters, there's three types of kritya. 
right? So now we're looking at within Kridanta, we're looking at Kritya. Within Kritya, there's these three types. One is those which the content is Yakara. The content which is Tavya and Aniya. We'll be seeing those three. Okay, so the this is group one, Ya, Yakara group, Tavya group, and Aniya group. Among these, right, among these three types, Tavya and Aniya, this Tavyat, Tavya, Aniya, can be suffix, suffix to any Datu, right? It can be added to any Datu under the sun. But these Yakara ones, Yat, Kyap, Nyat, which the content is Yakara, they can only be added to specific Datus, okay? I don't want to spend too much time on the rules of which specific datus because I feel like our brain's memory space will get filled with those details instead of the big picture, right? So that's why I've crossed out. You'll see these sticky notes. They're not actual sticky notes. They're computer sticky notes placed on there so that you don't get too much information. <laughs> Already it's too much information, <laughs> but we don't need to load too much, right, onto the computer. Yeah, so the question that's in the chat, I'll answer that in a moment, okay? There's a few things we need to know. Another thing that we might want to know is that we're making a new Pratipadika. When this Pratipadika is declined, it can be in any three linga. Three lingi, right? It can be any any of the genders. How do we know which gender? It's determined by the gender of the noun which the word qualifies. Okay. So it doesn't have a gender inherent to itself. It's going to see what is it um, describing or what is it qualifying? What is it an adjective? to or substantive to and based on that you'll get a linga right and accordingly it'll decline so right in punlinga napumsaka linga the let me back up sorry right now oh yeah sorry uh, we're okay so in punlinga and napumsaka linga it declines as a ending. In Sri Linga, we will add this a kara, and it declines as a ending, which is good for us. We know a kara ending. We know Rama Shabda. We know Ganga. <laughs> Ganga is a little bit sketchy. I know. I know you all. <laughs> Ganga, we need to practice, but Rama, we know. <laughs> okay. Let's look at this first group, the content, this Yakara group, right? So we're in, within Kritya, we're looking at that, this one group, which is the content of Yakara. Okay, so let's say these three, Yat, Kyap, Nyat, Yat, Kyap, Nyat. Let's say it one more time, Yat, Kyap, Nyat. Okay, so these, all three, the content is Yakara. So it makes sense, right? When we're talking about it letters, you can probably already guess which is the it letter, right? If yat, then you're gonna get rid of the takara, right? So takara is your it letter, it's gonna go away. In kyap, kakara and pakara, right? The first and last letter are gonna go away because you're ending with Yakara. For nyat, right, the first na and the last ta, they're going to go away, right? And so all you're left with all of these is, is yakara.
So here's some examples of yat ending words that we might have seen or heard in Vedanta class or elsewhere in prayers, for example. So this is, right, there's within this yakara group, what the first type is yat, right? Yat, kyap, and nyat, right? So yat is this first type. Here are some examples of just yat. Okay, so we're just adding a yakara all the way through, but you'll see that guna happens a lot of times. Guna happens in these two categories. Categories. So I'll show you. Right, G to conquer, right? I'm starting with the datu because we're talking about Kridanta to conquer plus yat. It becomes jaya. Right, what did we add? We added the meaning of karma, right? The karmani. And we added it should be done or necessary to be done or fit to be done. Here, necessary. So to conquer means becomes that which should be conquered. Right? When we add karmani, we add the ed, right? Conquered. Right? So Lanka is conquered, Jaya. We can add a different pratya and make it the conqueror, the doer of conquering. But here we're talking about the karma of conquering, right? Jaya. Ni plus yat, neya. That which should be led, meaning followers. You'll notice that here, G or Ni becomes J and Ne, Neya, Jaya, Neya. Here, what's happening is something called Guna. So, if I have an Ikara and I want to have, make it Guna, it becomes Ekara. Okay. So that's what guna is. Guna is one of those three letters. A, A, O. Here we're going to make it A. Same thing here. A at the end becomes long E, then guna, then followed by yat. So we have nya to know, plus yat becomes nyaya. So sometimes we we talk about nyata, the knower, nyanam, knowledge, and nyaya, that which is to be known. In Vedanta, right, there's three things, right? There's the jiva, the nyata, right? There's Brahman, which is nyaya, that which should be known. And then there's nyanam, the knowledge itself. Nyaya is that which should be known. So the object of knowing necessarily. Da becomes Deya, that which should be given. Should be given. Shraddhaya Deyam. Prama plus Yat Prameya, that which should be known. So Pramana and Prameya. Pramata, so you get those three as well. Pramana is the means of knowledge. Prameya is that which should be known through the means of knowledge, right? Anushteya, that which should be practiced. Abhideya, that which should be named like a child. Heya, that which should be left or abandoned. Pratipadya, here, the, this are, these are, this is a niche nijanta datu. What does that mean? 
meaning that I had a datu, I did a niche pratya to make a new datu. Right? I, I use a sanadi pratya. Niche becomes to desire to unfold, right? Or just simply to unfold. Now I can add yat and it becomes pratipadya, that which should be unfolded. Jignyasa, to desire to know, plus yat. Jignyasya, that which should be desired to be known. <laughs> Long. So in one word, jignyasa, jignyasya, look how much content we can fit into that word. Like how much meaning is packed into each of these words. That's why in Vedanta class, we need a long time to explain each word because they're packed with meaning, right? Here, learning Sanskrit, we'll, we'll start to get the tools to, to see why they're packed with so much meaning. Okay, labya nam gamya. Okay, so these are some examples. So the question in the chat, it says, Kritya, is this karma second vibhakti or bhave first vibhakti? Or, oh yeah, okay. So when I'm making a kritya ending word, like niya, right? So this is going to be in first vibhakti. That which should be known. It'll be in samanadi karanam with, the, with, with what should be known. Okay, so it's not second case, it's the first case, even though it has the karmani sense to it, which is confusing. <laughs> we'll see some sentences at the end. Even bhave, it'll give you first vibhakti. And then you decline it. Well, first you get a pratipadika, right? And depending on what it's qualifying, you'll get the case. Here are some examples of kyap ending words, right? This is the second type. So, stu plus ya, but in kyap, I add sometimes this extra takara comes in, right? So, here we have stutya, that which should be praised. This one's very interesting. Shas to teach plus kyap becomes shishya. So the word for student, what does it actually mean? One who is fit to be taught. One who is prepared to be taught. One who should be taught. Shasana Yogya. Drish plus kyap, drishya. Shak plus kyap, shakya. That's what should be possible. Kri plus kyap. Kritya. <laughs> you see where this word kritya came from? That which should be done. It's actually the word itself is a kridanta word. Kritya. Um, I'm just just quickly, we'll just look on this side of the chart just so we can move this too quickly. You see stu plus krap. It becomes stupas yakara because the it letter goes away. Here, there is a specific rule that because it, yeah, there's a there's a rule that adds this takara. We can see this more in detail in our own uh, later. And it becomes stutya. Here are some examples of nyat ending words. So this is the third type. I know I'm saying a lot of words and this is fast. I just want to show you some of the words that you might see that are this type of kritya. What's an indicator? So an indication is that if you're looking at a Vedantic text or some prayer or something in Sanskrit and you see a noun, with this yakara in there, you might want to question, is this a karmani 
Kridanta, right? Is this a karmani word? Is this the object of something? A way of remembering that is even when we're talking about verbs, we add the yakara, right? To make a karmani. Here it's technically a different yakara than, than what you add to the verb. But you can just remember yakara means karmani. Right? Yakara addition means karmani. Yeah, so there's a question about, can you show how kyap works a little bit more? It's the same way that the other one worked. Kyap is kakara and pakara are it letters, meaning they go away. So then we're just left with yakara, right? Stu plus ya. Stu means to praise, right? Now, because stu ends with the short vowel, so this is so specific, right? So we don't need to remember all these details right here, but, but since stu is short vowel and kyap is one whose it letter is pakara, <laughs> Then, because of this, we get this tuk agama. It, the takara gets added, attached to the end of the datu. So, what this all means is you get an extra takara. Okay? Not always, but specific to stu. Specific to this example. So, it becomes stutya. Sutya, right? Stu means to praise. Now, if I'm adding karmani and should be done, so that which should be praised. That which should be praised. So, Bhagavan Stutyaha Bhavati. Bhagavan is that which should be praised. So what's what we need to know, so the question in the chat, all we need to know right now is there's this thing called kritya. It gives us additional meaning of karmani and it gives a meaning of it's like should uh, necessity or fitness to be done, right? And we'll get a yakara at the end. That's all we need to know for now. Yeah. yeah, and then here's some nyat words. These writ ending dat datus take nyat, so we see kr plus nyat becomes karya. You also saw this here. Gr can also take kyap, but it doesn't matter, right? So here, gr can take nyat, so it becomes karya. So notice how here we get vriddhi happening. Here we get vriddhi happening. What does vriddhi mean? So, for example, here I have r at the end. And I'm getting riddhi, so then I get ar. So kr becomes karya. E becomes i, u becomes o. So kr becomes ar, so becomes kar plus ya, so karya. Kr becomes har plus ya, harya. Sadhya, sadhana sadhya, you might have heard that. Right, the, the accomplishing and the accomplished. Vachya, you can see this. This word you've seen a lot, vakya, a sentence. That which should be spoken is a sentence. Avakya. 
you've seen this word, yogya, that which is fit. Pujya, that which should be worshipped, right? I'm just picking up a few of these because we're at the end of our class. Yeah? So you can take a look at these. I'm just going to end our class here. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om